Hi everyone, for this lesson, this is for Algebra 2 honor students. This is chapter seven and 10 review for your quiz. So let's get started. Identify the following for the function. We have a four term polynomial. This is called a quartic because it's x to the fourth power. Our leading term is nine x to the fourth. That's the highest power. My leading coefficient is nine because it's x to the fourth and it's positive. My end behavior is up, up. The maximum number of turns is going to be n minus 1, which is 4 terms, uh, 4 power of 4 minus 1, which is equal to 3. So you'd write 3 turns. And my y-intercept is when you set x equal to 0 and you get 8. Um, keep in mind my leading term that if it had been x to the third power, it would have been a cubic. x to the second power, that would have been a quadratic. x to the first power would have been a linear, etc. Um, for this problem here, I'm asking for the leading term again. This is going to be x to the fourth power um, because it's 2, 1, 1. So that's fourth power. And behavior, again, positive x to the fourth is up, up. Multiplicities are 3 with a multiplicity of 2, which means my graph is tangent. And some people say bounces. The appropriate term is tangent. Um, we have negative 1 with the multiplicity of 1, and we have 1 with the multiplicity of 1 also. And what happens here is that your graph is crossing at those terms. So you would say, here's 3. I have a 0 at 3. I have a 0 at negative 1, and I have a 0 at 1. I have a y-intercept at 0, comma. If x is 0, I would get negative 3 to the second power. Uh, 1 to the 1 power and negative 1 to the 1 power. So that's going to be 9 times 1 times negative 1, which is negative 9, which my, means my graph goes through at negative 9. Um, so with the end behavior up and up, and my graph being tangent at 3, it means that it's going to drop down and it's going to curve around, bounce off of there, right there at that 3. It's going to, right here, it's going to bounce off. Oops. Okay, hold on. I'm not sure what that meant. Oh, I see I'm in the wrong one. Okay, so it's going to bounce off it here at 3. It's going to go up, go through 1, down negative 9, and then come back up like that. Um, for this problem here, I am going to need a factor. <laughs> because what's happening here is that um, it's an x cubed. And so I'm going to move my little graph down here. I'll do that in just a minute. Um, for graphing, uh, for factoring here, I'm going to try 1 to start, and we have 1, 8, negative 1, and negative 8. Just make sure that you make sure that these are descending. Add down is 1, multiply across, nine plus one, 8 plus 1 is 9, I get 9, 9 minus 1 is 8, 8 times 1 is 8, add down, I get 0, awesome. So we get x minus 1 times the quantity what's left there, which is x squared plus 9x plus 8. And then factoring that, I get x minus 1 times x plus 1, and then x plus 8. And as if you were to write this as a product of um, linear factors, this is how you would write it. My zeros are going to be 1 right here, 1, 1, and 1, which means that all my zeros, 1, negative 1, and negative 8, have a multiplicity of 1. All of them do which means that at 1, my graph is going to cross through or intersect all the way down. Um, my y-intercept is 0, comma, negative 8. And I'm going to hold off on my additional point just for a minute. I have a 0 at 1. I have a 0 at negative 1. I have a 0 at negative 8. And at 0, negative 8, lots of 8s and 1s here, um, my graph crosses the y-intercept for the y-intercept. Um, because it's x cubed, my end behavior is upright and down left. It's positive x cubed, so it's upright. means that this end behavior up, the ends of my zeros are going to go, that's what that means, end behavior at the end of the zeros. Go through, cross through at negative 8, go back up, go through here, and then cross through here at negative 8. Now, for me, because I'm going to be required to put in an additional point, um, I might consider a point, let's say, here at negative 2. So, like, I might write f of negative 2 to figure out how high up this goes. And if I did that, I would get, what, 2, oh, excuse me, negative 2 
cubed plus 8 times negative 2 squared minus parentheses negative 2 and then minus 8. And I believe that I did this. Um, if I plugged a negative 2, I got 40, which means that up here, that my graph isn't necessarily right around here. It's more like way up there, right? So it more comes up here at 40 at when it's at here at negative 2. So what additional points do is it just makes your graph just a little bit more accurate. Okay. Um, for this problem here, I'm asking you to use synthetic division to show that this is a factor. When I ask you to use synthetic division, I'm looking for this. You're going to set um, x minus 7. Oh, I don't know what just happened. You're going to set x minus 7 equal to 0. Hold everything. And with that, um, we would get 7 here. And then we have negative 1. So it goes 3, 2, 1, and then no value. So I have to have a placeholder there, right? And so with that, this value here, at negative 1, then it would be negative 2, then it would be 8, and then it would be 0. And we would get add down negative 1, multiply across negative 7, add down, I get negative 9, multiply across, I get negative 63, add down, I get negative 55, multiply across, I get negative 385, adding down, I get 385, negative, which means that this is not 0. So you would say, therefore, uh, x minus 7 is not a factor of that polynomial, when in fact it's a point at 7, negative 385. So it's definitely not a factor because this did not equal 0. Um, use the remainder theorem uh, to find the remainder. So this would be a different question. Using the remainder theorem, you're going to say f of negative 1, and you're going to go negative, you're going to go negative 1 times the quantity, negative 1 to the third power, minus 2 times negative 1 squared, plus 8 times negative 1, and working that out, um, what is that? Negative, negative, negative times negative is positive 1. Uh, negative 1 squared is 1, and 1 times negative 2. Uh, 1 times negative 2 is negative 2, and this is not letting me write this, so I'm going to write negative 2 having issues with my pen a little bit. Here we go. And then minus 8. So that's negative 10 uh, plus 1. And so that's negative 9. So my remainder is negative 9. So we'd write, therefore, negative 9 is the remainder of f of negative 1. Or you would write the point negative 1, 9. But make sure that you're explaining exactly what you're doing because we're looking for that. I don't want just an answer. I want to make sure that you know exactly what you're trying to find when you're doing finding that answer. Um, this one is saying using the factor theorem, very similar to the remainder theorem, um, but if x plus 4, see how the difference is here, x plus 4 is a factor, so I would then plug in, in right here, I would be plugging in um, f of uh, negative 4, and then I would get the opposite of negative 4 to the third power minus 2 times negative 4 squared plus 8 times negative 4. And when, when it's all said and done, I've already done this, this is f of negative 4 does turn out to be 0. So you would write, therefore, um, x plus 4 is a factor of the polynomial, and you would write that out. Um, for this problem here, I want you to find all the rational roots. And so what that means is I don't want you to solve it. I don't want to find all the zeros. I just want you to write the roots. And the roots are going to be all the factors of 9, over the factors of 2. So it's the factors of the constant over the factors of the coefficient. So the factors of 9 are plus or minus 9. Uh, and actually, I would rather you write it um, in order. So I would rather you say plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3, and plus or minus 9. The factors of 2 are plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 2. So this isn't actually your answer. Your answer is going to be written in simplified form, which basically means that you're going to give me all the factors. So 1 over 1, 1 over 2. 3 over 1, 3 over 2. And 9 over 1, and 9 over 2. And so for, all right. So for this, still having issues with this. So again, you would write plus or minus 1 over 1 and plus or minus 1 over 2. And you would separate these with a comma. 
plus or minus 3 over 1, plus or minus 3 over 2, plus or minus uh, 9 over 1, and plus or minus 9 over 2. All right? And then that would be my answer. Okay. Um, for this problem here, I'm asking you to write as a product of linear factors, which means that I need to find all the factors. Um, for this, I'm going to try 1. Just gonna, I'm just going to start with 1 and see where we go from there. Find the list of issues. All right, let's see how we do. Um, plugging in 1, uh, factors 1, negative 1, negative 6, 4, and then 8. And so adding down and multiplying across. So I'm going to add down, multiply across, add down, multiply across. Uh, negative 6, I get negative 6, which is going to give me negative 2, and that doesn't work. So, is that right? Let me check what I think. Let's see. Adding down 1, 1, I get 0, 0, yep, that didn't work. I'm going to try negative 1 now, see if that one works. So, negative 1, 1, negative 1, negative 6. Okay, adding down, multiplying across, adding down. Multiplying across, I get negative 4, 4, I get 8, negative 8, which is a 0. Awesome. So that means so far I have x plus 1 as a factor. But I have to do this again because this is x cubed. Remember, if I start with x4, x to the 4th, this would be x cubed, x squared. So I'm going to go 1, negative 2, negative 4, and then 8. And so for this problem, let's see. I'm going to now try... Um, two let's try two all righty let's try two and i'm going to erase this really quick so that doesn't get in my way all right so plugging this here i'm going to try two i get one times two is two zero zero negative four negative eight oh and that one works also and so now um f so now we're going to have uh let's see so far we've got x plus one we have this one, which is x minus 2, and then we have x squared, no x, and then minus 4, ooh, which is going to give me x plus 1, x minus 2. It's going to give me x plus 2 and x minus 2 equals 0. And then for this, then what it looks like I'm going to have now is rewriting this. I have x minus 2 quantity squared. I have x plus 2, and then I have x plus 1. And so my zeros are going to be 2 with the multiplicity of 2, negative 2 with the multiplicity of 1, and, come on, okay, of 1, and negative 1 with the multiplicity of 1. And so now um, where I'm at is I'm going to graph this, and let's see what I'm going to bring down my graph and see what this is going to actually look like. Um, let's see. All right, so at 2, I have a 0. Here's 2. At negative 2, I have a 0. And at negative 1, I have a 0. Um, hmm, this is way up there. x to the fourth power, n behavior is up, up, and it's positive. I have a, I have a, uh, X intercept at zero sorry a y intercept at zero eight and so that's another point that's going to be on my graph so zero eight and so my graph end end is going to go up on this side up on this side at two that means it's tangent and then these ones it's there's going to cross so cross and then cross so that means it's tangent here so it's going to swing down bounce off that come back up here go through negative one go through negative two and then come back up now for me i would ask you to find a couple of additional points also check your calculator i mean you're allowed to use your calculator on this you should be looking at um the values for this to um you know to solve you there's no reason why you would um whoa okay i don't know what that happened <laughs> there's no reason for you to um be changing that i mean like not check your answers okay
All right, for this problem here, it says write the polynomial as a second degree. So second degree polynomials, um, but they only gave me one degree. But according to the fundamental theorem of algebra, which we already covered last week, um, for every imaginary zero, you also have a, uh, like a, its partner, its complex conjugate, right? So realistically, we have um, 6i, but we also then have negative 6i. Okay, so let's see if my pen will work. Here we go. So f of x um, is equal to, we're going to have x plus 6i, and we have its, uh, the conjugate. Well, this is, this is the x. It's always the opposite. So for this one, it's this right here, x minus 6i, and the conjugate was the negative 6i. And so we wrote that as a product of factors. For the quiz, I'm not asking you to put this in standard form, so you can leave your answer like this. For this problem here is a fourth degree polynomial, but again, I only gave you three zeros. But so that means for this one, um, you've got the x minus zero, which you should write as just x. You've got the x minus three, which is this one here. But for root five and negative root five, those also, like imaginary numbers, have uh, conjugates. So this would be x plus root five, and then the one that we're missing which is the square root of five, that would be this one, which is x minus the square root of five. And again, leave your answers as um, a product of linear factors. Um, for this one right here, it's a fifth degree polynomial. So be careful with this one because um, I only gave you three zeros. But remember, imaginary numbers are come with their conjugates, so complex conjugates. So we have f of x is equal to this one. For negative one, it would be x plus one. For i plus 7, now watch for this because remember, to get x plus 1, what I actually did was I went x minus the opposite of 1, or what that's what I did. And so for the complex conjugates like that, this is how you would write it. You would go x minus the quantity i plus 7, Oy. x minus, okay, let's see if that'll work, uh, i plus 7, and then we would have x minus i minus 7. And then that's three factors, but now I have to do the i minus 3. So it would be times the quantity, times the quantity, i, excuse me, x. And then it would be x minus, so x minus i uh, plus 3 and x minus the quantity i minus 3. And then finally, what you would do is you would actually rewrite that as f of x is equal to x plus 1. And you would multiply this out, um, simplify, x minus i minus 7. Oh, yeah, my pen. So x minus i, anyway, minus 7. So you would distribute. See this right here? You're going to distribute that. So minus i minus 7. And then it'd be x minus i plus 7. It would be x minus i minus 3. And then it would be x minus i plus 3. And so that's how I would write it as a product of linear factors. This one right here is asking me to factor completely. So for this, I would factor out a 2 and an a. And I would be left with an a cubed plus um, 8. Oh, and that's a cube cube, right? And a cube cube is going to factor to be a binomial and then a trinomial, that's prime. Um, remember, soap are uh, signs. So the same sign, so if this is plus, this is plus. Same opposite, so that's minus. And then the last one is always positive. So you would say the cube root of a cubed is a, the cube root of eight is two. And then for this term, you would go a times what is a cubed? So that would be a squared. For this term, you would go two times what is eight? So that would be four. And then for the middle term here, you would multiply these two terms together, but don't look at the actual sign. You just leave it. And so this is my answer. I would just box this up because, first of all, the trinomial is always going to be prime unless this can refactor again, which I've had cases where it did, but we're not going to give you something like that at this point. Um, for this one here, you need to recognize that this is a perfect square trinomial. And so... Um, I would factor that to be x minus 4 times the quantity x minus 4, which would be x minus 4 quantity squared, and then be minus 81. And it's a difference of two squares. So a lot of people will do this. Um, I've seen this a lot. They would say, well, let x equal x minus 4. 
this whole thing right here, right there, I'm going to make that x. So I would just write it like x squared minus 81, and then I would um, factor that as if I was factoring a difference of 2 squares. So that would be x plus 9, and then x minus 9. And then I would go back and I would replace my x minus 4, right, with my x. And so I'd say x minus 4, add 9, and then I would say x minus 4, and then minus 9. And so it would give me x <clears throat> plus 5 times the quantity x minus 13, and then that's my factored form. Um, the only difference is, is that um, sometimes instead of a number here, because a lot of kids will combine these, right? I mean, that was, that's like your first instinct is to combine those. Um, a lot of people will combine those. So let's just say I had the same exact problem, which is, and come on, pen, um, x squared minus 8x uh, plus 16, and then minus, let's say, a squared. Well, in this case, you would say x minus 4 times that. I would do everything exactly the same, right? I'd have x minus 4 quantity squared minus a squared. And then this is a difference of two squares, right? You would say x minus 4 plus a and then x minus 4 minus a. And then because none of these are going to simplify, this would actually be my solution. Um, instead of, I, I, I guess I didn't see that and I would... I would give you a different kind of problem than that. It would probably be a variable of some sort. So that's all the questions that you're going to see on the quiz. I wish you the best of luck. You got this. Um, thanks so much for watching. All right, good luck to you.